All right, today, as the other day, I told you we were gonna, I was gonna show you how to set up a homemade shaper. And this is basically what it looks like. Got a two horse motor down here. And then I've got a, uh, a three, uh, excuse me, a four inch cutter on top. We've got some pillow block bearings in here. We've got the shaft. And then of course, then we've got our mount for the motor. So the first thing I want to talk about is we'll start with the motor. Okay, what I've done is I've taken just a regular short piece of plywood. I've mounted the motor on it. I've just found a couple of four inch door hinges. Mounted all that together. And then at the top, all right, this, this screw is the adjustment so that you can adjust the belt from the motor to your shaft pulley. Depending on how fast you want your cutter to turn, it amounts to the pulleys that you put on here. This one I have a five inch pulley on the motor. I've got a two and a half inch pulley on the shaft. And with that, uh, that's a two to one ratio, which is gonna mean that the motor turns 3450, the cutter's gonna turn around 7,000. All, right. All right, now we're up here with the main part of this shaper operation. We have two pillow block bearings, and that's P-I-L-L-O-W, block, B-L-O-C-K, pillow block bearings. And then we have this shaft that goes through it. Then we have some nuts, but let me discuss the pillow block bearings first. They, they do make some inexpensive ones, and because they're designed for low speed, they're not designed for high speed. So you want to buy some, you don't have to buy the most expensive ones like for an aircraft or anything, but you do want to buy something that I, I would say is probably a, about half, about less of what an, ex, an expensive one would be. These alone cost me $25 a piece. I could have bought some for $15, but that means they probably wouldn't have lasted very long. So get some a little bit more expensive ones. They do come with uh, low speed grease so you want to go to your uh, parts house you don't want to get grease for ball joints or something like that you want to buy grease that is designed for high heat because these bearings are spinning that fast are going to generate a lot of heat so the grease is that's the purpose of the grease is to keep the heat from getting too hot and uh, ruining your bearings Okay, so you want to make sure you do that for sure. That's one of the first things you want to do when you get everything together. The next thing is now we need this shaft in here. On this particular unit, this is a three quarter inch shaft because the cutter has a three quarter inch hole in it. And so I did that so that it could be adjusted with this bottom nut. Now there's another shaper I'm going to show you that's a little bit different setup than this and there's a reason for it. But this one, this is the only one that I do that I change these cutters and there's such a dramatic distance in them that I needed the extra adjustment. But back to the shaft, you need to get a three quarter inch shaft. You need to have it uh, threaded on the end which means you got to find somebody that's got a lathe or some way to put threads on the end of your shaft and and then of course make sure you get the nuts and I found out that fine threads are going to be better than the coarse thread that I'm using here fine thread gives you a little bit easier adjustment these are a little bit touchy because there's it's just such a thick thread that it's really kind of hard to you know get that little bitty fine adjustment on these things all right Back to this shaft, now we've got these two pillow block bearings and we have these set screws in here. And I'm hoping you can see them, there's two of them in here. There's one here and there's, there's another one here just about a quarter of the way around. And what you normally want to do is when you get your shafts set to the height that you want it, you want to run these all the way down until you get a good contact with your shaft. You want to back them out and then you want to run a drill bit down in there and kind of do a pilot hole so that these uh, set screws don't back out. Because there again, heat will generate enough to cause these things to expand and shrink. And what happens if they get loose, 
when they start shrinking down and then you fire the machine up again, well, it's gonna start making some noise, which means that the screws have backed out, but you won't know it. Next thing you know, you've got a bad shaft. So there again, that's another part, part of this thing, is you wanna make sure these screws are good and tight with pilot holes on your shaft. You got one at the bottom and then one closer to the top. And the next part on this shaft is the shorter you make this shaft in between your pillow block bearings, the better it's gonna run. The longer the shaft is gonna give you problems, especially if you have a cutter, especially if you even get into bigger cutters. Most of them, well, almost all of them are balanced, but having them resharpened sometimes will knock them out of balance. Well, what'll happen is the top of this shaft, when it gets going 7,000 RPM and it's just a hair bit out of balance, well, the shaft is gonna start oscillating and you'll feel it in the machine. Once you start running stock through there, it'll calm it down a little bit, but as the thing's sitting here oscillating, you know, that's telling you something. That means there's getting a lot of wear and tear on your bearings. So you wanna make sure that's you know, another reason why you want some good bearings on these things. Now we're gonna get up to the nuts. This is pretty much the final part of this thing. I have this one nut on the bottom. I have some washers in here because that just gives it a little bit more contact. We've got these two nuts on top. We have a regular nut like we do on the bottom, but then we have a smaller, what they call a jam, G-A-M-B nut. And it's, and it's made just for that purpose. What it does, it jams itself against this top nut because what would happen if we didn't have that jam nut on here, these two nuts, as this thing is making contact with lumber, would be trying to work its way down the shaft, which means it'd be digging into more and more. Of course, the more it digs into it, the more it's gonna spin down. So you put this jam nut on here to lock these things down. Now, one of them on the bottom nut, on one of them I did, I had a Allen set screw in this in one of the nuts, but that didn't seem to work very well. I think it probably may have knocked something a little out of balance. Anyway, I got rid of it and just used a regular nut, and it seemed to work a lot better. So, I don't know. That's something you can experiment with something that you can lock your bottom nut down. But the reason I've got a nut on the bottom is because a lot of these bits, there's, there's probably 50 different kinds of these bits you use on panels. And some of them are thin like this one, but some of them are really thick. And so that's where you need the extra movement up and down for these adjustments. And so that's something to think about. And you don't want any more of the shaft sticking above your cutter then th you want the smallest amount above your cutter as you can get and it all boils down the shorter the shaft the better your your cuts gonna be okay now that we've got everything started everything's bolted in got the pulleys on got the motor mounted got our shafts we've got this box built we got this that's holding the motor we've got this front part as I showed you, it's just a little short piece of plywood, but now it's tied in to two side pieces. And then we've got these mounting blocks that are on each side and it's on the front. The mounting block for the back is this piece of plywood here that the motor's on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a box that fits up against these, these two bys all the way around and then across the back. And this is gonna give us the height that we want to use for working. In other words, we want the working height that's comfortable for us. Most of the time it's 36 inches. Some people like them a little taller, some people like them a little smaller. Okay, but that will be the next segment. So, thank you very much, and I'll be getting the next segment to you soon.